scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. You know, believers play with the idea of covenants and you will see that everything God takes seriously, marriage, he took it seriously and he tied it to a covenant. Do you know why? Because he knows under normal circumstances, the couple can run away by the next day. So he put covenant, a non-emotional binding so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel. There is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations. Salvation is a covenant. Whosoever believes him. If not, there are people who can be so bad, they don't deserve to be saved. However, because it is a covenant. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, it does not matter who that person is. Provided you confess with your heart. Let me tell you. If you are given the keys for salvation, there are people whose level of evil, if you see them, you will tell them, don't near this altar. However, because it is a covenant, whosoever believes in him, even if you are Saul, even if you are Paul, whosoever, the only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels. Salvation is not for angels, and non-human spirits i'll be teaching you the rules of engagement that is why satan and demons cannot be forgiven mm -mm. salvation is for men salvation is for men the benefit of salvation extends to creation but animals don't have to give their life to jesus they are already under the dominion of man the same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter, provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships, non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. You are going to be given 500,000 every month, they calculate it for you per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi and that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar 
is simply a system of authorization again we'll discuss that next week when we talk about altars an altar because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven in fact god himself sits his throne is an altar a system of authorization let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne he literally sits on an altar an altar is a system of authorization the assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding even when those who initiated it are no more an altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants there is no true covenant until there is an altar and that altar is built and ratified with blood So that even though our forefathers have long gone, even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone, but the altars that represent the witness are still there. So after 50 years, 100 years, the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region. And every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant. Drink this. This is my blood of the new covenant. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Are we together now? Watch this. When the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt, remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness, whether you are a Jew or not. Just find a house. The house did not have emotions. Provided there is blood on the house, whoever is in it you are saved but when you are in that house even though you are saved there will still be a difference if you wanted to become a jew there you have to submit yourself to circumcision however as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned the angel does not see men he's looking for the blood you know why because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody and like we say in theology, when he came to some homes, he found them already dead. Because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened. So the angel of death will pass. As far as the angel of death is concerned, he killed everybody. It's only that when he came, some people, someone had helped him kill the ones in the house. So he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there. Listen. That is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region this spirit when you see them have no fear through ancestry through bloodline or through their personal activities they have brought themselves to that point that is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access, you do not cast it in Jesus' name. It is the blood that speaks. There are rules of engagement. Look at me. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. You would think God would look at man and say, I am God, I am creator. Man, be free. No. When he gave Satan the authority, it was willful and it would take the blood. This is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble. Go and read the history of many lands. You will hear that they buried human beings. They buried people alive. Do you know the power of blood and the power? Human beings were the zenith of God's creation. And you will not just carelessly say, I don't believe, I force my mind to think right. You are joking. It takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars 
there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is i don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar are we together because the blood of jesus speaketh better things every blood speaks something but with respect to what we want the only blood that can speak to the degree one million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house but you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is it can't go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own you will be learning that the blood is one of the weaknesses on earth do you know what that means there are three things that have lived as long as the earth one of it is water this water you are drinking you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles you don't know who else has taken it before it got to you that's why the bible says water is a witness it has lived long on earth recycling itself and blood nobody invents his own blood it is past that means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person except you are denying biology is that true i'm not a doctor but let's be intelligent for god's sake it took that blood to bring you so the blood cannot be as the same age with you there are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word and the father the spirit and the word and these three agree and on earth there are three witnesses the spirit the water and the blood many of us have found ourselves in situations today listen to me we're wrapping up you have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted and as soon as you are done with the fasting the same thing you prayed about happens casually as if you were wasting your time in all that fasting you were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you and just when you finish the last fast that sleep you just took a little siesta and that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting because there are rules of engagement there are people who will not listen to me the fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already that is a symptom of an attack listen I will always tell you I'm not just speaking from scripture alone I'm speaking from experience there are things in your life that will never grow there are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting God for some kind of liberty for yourself for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free and ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies 
The strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage. When the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver, deception happens. The cure is not necessarily driving the deceiver alone, but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge. When you come to that point of knowledge, now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you. If a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your, say your sibling and he gives 10, 10,000 and he says give everybody. If you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there, the person can even give you 1,000 and you can kneel down. He can even say go away. This was for me. Is that true? But if for any reason you find a way when the person wants to solve that problem, he will come again. And he will say, let me repeat what I said. I said, this 10,000 is for everybody. When you hear it, that contention dies. Because immediately now you know the truth. And based on the truth you know, you can say, my 10,000, no stories. Hand it over to me now in peace. Your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have. When you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say, ah, did I talk too much? Oh God, forgive me. It's because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage. Listen, I have held many charms with my bare hands. I have prayed for many people. This is what I do. I have seen many spirits. I have met many demon spirits. I can tell you the strength of Satan is in his power to deceive. The strength of Satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints. The strength of Satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding. For John 1 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. When you go to your village, you may, most likely may see shrines. You most likely may see a lot of demonic things around. Just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties. But when light comes, I don't know how true it is, but I hear it's the story of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. When I think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort and they saw the chicken it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die and they carried the chicken and said we can't waste this chicken like this and they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out whether you know and believe what God told you. The trouble is, if you believe what God told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life, now you have defeated him totally. One last scripture and then we'll begin our prayer. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Let's start from verse, that should be 24. Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? It's a question. Or the lawful captive? You know who a lawful captive is? A lawful captive is one who was bought from a slave master. Because those days they used to sell human beings just like chickens. And so if I'm a slave and my slave master comes and exchange money with someone and they transfer me, I am still a slave. I am a lawful captive. Number two, if a king leads a delegation to go for war and they conquer the people and kill the king, 
all the people within that land become slaves is that true they are called lawful captives for instance israel in egypt they were lawful captives that's why they could whip them to build those pyramids and all those egyptian buildings but he's saying is there a possibility that when the mighty has taken a prey or the lawful captive can he be delivered let the lord answer it by himself but thus saith the lord hmm. even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with him that contended with thee and i will save your children there is a cure to demonic covenants there is a cure to yokes and spells and hexes and all of these things please hear me there is a cure when jesus christ hung on that cross it was not just the body of a 33 year old man hanging his blood was touching the earth that old earth that is one of the witnesses when he drained his blood and according to the revelation of paul to the church in he the hebrew church when he went as a high priest and a lamb also he poured his blood once and for all and he returned back to the earth and said all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me listen john said i wept for no man that means men are doomed i wept for no man is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder said weep not weep not oh crying comes to an end weep not weep not for behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed the word prevailed means qualified to open the book and lose the seven seals verse 6 and I beheld and in the midst of the throne were four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though he had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes the lamb that was slain now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise up we raise up for you are god and god alone hallelujah Now unto the Lamb upon the throne We raise the sound We raise the sound For you God. For you are God and God alone Hallelujah Hallelujah Listen, can I tell you this? The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen. Listen. There are people today who under normal circumstances you should not rise. I don't know what my forefathers did. I don't know what they did. In, in dating there is what we call AD and BC. Is that true? The middle man was Jesus Christ. I may not know what happened before he came, but the good news is that he came. He came. He came. Please listen to me. Your destiny depends on what you are hearing. Remember everything I taught you today. Satan is not looking for your money. 
he's not looking for your fruitfulness he's not looking for your job he's not looking for your health he's looking for loyalty transgenerational loyalty and that the structure of his operation largely is deception he manipulates strategies that fights the word of God the principal raw material for his fashioning his attack against you is the word of God it's amazing that it's not only God and believers that use the word of God Satan uses it too it is his principal raw material hear me you hear of young men going to go and do money ritual you will never see Satan following them yet he's the one moving them deception listen and when they go and do the money ritual you will see that there are physical evidences money comes so they'll go and do it again because they don't know what else Satan will never tell you the complete story and he will never tell you the whole truth he will doctor the truth to present it in a way that provides an advantage for him when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth all truth Satan has deceived pastors Satan has deceived churches for instance the understanding and the theology that you should just concentrate on serving God in your spiritual life and don't worry whether you are doing well or not whether your finances are doing well it looks like a sincere message but that is a destructive message many sincere people have received it and today they cannot pay the school fees of their children and today they are in trouble and then for others who come and fall into this deception everything is about prosperity and prosperity and money and making it and doing all of this and they forget about strengthening believers to be strong no knowledge of the truth no evangelism no nothing and people become carnally minded all they want is competition of clothes and cars and all of that that is another kind of error but when the spirit of truth comes he will bring the whole truth and create a balanced structured growth another kind of lie that satan is so mighty you don't know what he can do be afraid and be watching always be in a position of warfare and by warfare they mean just be ready to fight that is not scriptural it may be sincere it may be well-meaning by well-meaning people but believe me from the authority of God's word that is not the position of the believer we have been given a position of victory 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 in Christ then the ones who say ignore everything don't worry about anything provided you are happy you are fine and the devil likes such sermons and he continues to use subtlety to wreak havoc over people satan will join the heads of a husband and wife and stand behind and watch them in ignorance blaming one another for food for car for house rent and it is none of those issues the adversary join the heads of people and go back and watch with joy now you are getting intelligence that everything that happens in your life among the many factors you put together to interpret the happenings in your life do not forget to tap into the wisdom of the spirit be able to discern his deception the way my husband has been behaving in the last two weeks something is wrong you don't just say i will show you that i'm a wife you think you just married a foolish person when you think like that he has also deceived you to join your head together indeed one person has to create the advantage in that equation and in that case let it be you and you go and begin to pray now I will teach you by next week when we are dealing with administering deliverance because most believers say pray but most believers don't know what they are saying this idea of praying does not just mean talk to God mm -mm. God is not the only person you talk to in prayer there are times you talk to the situation there are times you talk to the devil there are times that you talk to you engage 
and calling to remembrance the integrity of God. All of it is called prayer. So don't say, I prayed. We need to vet what you did based on the situation you are trying to handle. Just because you were given injection does not mean you were given the right treatment. We have to look at what was wrong with you and who gave you the injection and what you were given. And we can say, no, you have typhoid. This is not the treatment for typhoid. Are we together? So just because you feel the pain of injection, you can say, I received the injection, I should be well. That's what is frustrating many believers because they will tell you, apostle, I have prayed. You don't, look, nobody prays like me. I agree. Let's hear what you have been saying. Let's understand to who you have been talking. First, let me know what you want to achieve. You will find out that many believers have just been wasting their time. When they say pray, they just, they just mean talk. Talk loud. Add it again to God. Round up. You have prayed. You will never get victory that way. It takes intelligence to understand what to say. There were times Jesus spoke to the Father. Father, I thank thee because you hear me. And he turned and said, open the tomb. Lazarus, come forth. Notice the protocol. When he was about to break bread, he gave thanks and said, go and share it. Is that how you multiply? He never said multiply this bread. He just said give, give thanks. Go and multiply it. When he stood before demons, he did not talk to the father. He rebuked the spirits. Go. When he sent the disciples, he said in my name, when you find the spirits, use my office. My name does not mean J-E-S-U-S. -S. My name means the consciousness of my office. I have given you a position use it when you see satan and they return back with shock and they said even do you know the most outstanding miracle every miracle jesus did had been done in the old testament the only miracle that had not been done in the new testament was a miracle of deliverance never had a man used authority and a name to remove any demon you don't find that in the old testament you find them playing strings and the demons living are we together now but you do not find anybody using a name to remove any demon. It's not done any. In fact, what they do is they will kill the person. They stone the person who is demonized. When he dies, they now frustrate the demon because like you have learned, it takes a long time for demons to find bodies. They don't just find any body. They can find any mind, but they don't just find any body. Bodies are scarce bodies are scarce that's why a legion will live in one body because bodies are scarce are you ready to pray i made up my mind that i will open up the truth to god's people to really understand with balance and with understanding don't just say i'm born again and everything is over it may not be very accurate you need to be instructed and to have superior spiritual understanding for now you understand what deliverance is that it has to do with establishing and manifesting your victory not fighting for it hallelujah you have won the victory Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me, hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won the victory, hallelujah, And then we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Two prayer 
prayer points prayer point number one I taught you the three levels of demonic influences you are going to pray and immune yourself by knowledge and declare that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for you and for your loved ones whether it is witchcraft through deception whether it is manipulation and control of your mental faculties whether it's possession of your unsaved loved ones declare in the name of Jesus that you are free completely from this open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray Open your mouth and begin to pray. Shabekatos koto parakata, embrekete parakos katila kataba, ebrakatos kani parusiata. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Shabrande ke pakatos kalika pras, e prote ke parakatos ke tele makata. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Please give us verse five. Second Corinthians ten, and let's start from verse four. Second Corinthians ten four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds you know what a stronghold is a stronghold is a negative mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victim remains in that thought pattern they are called strongholds when a wrong mindset now has the fortification of demon spirits it is that state that makes the individual the word of god of non-effect casting down imaginations from the word imagery and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity help me every thought this is the realm of warfare your mind even though satan knows that you have the victory he knows that your mind is part of the participatory systems that will make victory manifest so he will hijack your thinking are you ready to pray lay your hands on your head representing your mind and i want you to begin to prophesy i have a sound mind in the name of jesus a mindset that is word based word compliant word based word compliant someone is praying lay your hands on your head prophetically over your children someone is praying shake it take a pack of those go to break it up shkati print take it take it ask you every wrong thinking every wrong teaching every wrong understanding cultural demonic sociological that is authorizing darkness to take advantage of me in the name of jesus i cast down every imagination Sustain faulty thinking patterns that came from culture, that came from your failure, that came from your association, that came from the poor mentorship platforms that has built an inaccurate understanding about God. Every high thing must come down, every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown, you overcome 
you overcome Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome yeah. Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken You wear the victor's crown You overcome You overcome Every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken Prayer point number two. This is the last prayer point now. Please, let me pray for you and beseech you. Don't miss next week's service. Next week's service is another miracle service. I know we have a monthly miracle service, but that is when I'm going to be ministering. I will be taking out time. We are going to be breaking yokes and curses and all kinds of demonic things. And I will not only be praying for you, I will be teaching you that you will go back home and it will be like wildfire that all this nonsense that has trapped people down it must give way once and for all <laughs> hallelujah now listen to me you are going to engage the blood just one last prayer can I tell you this I told you when Satan is afflicting an individual on legal basis you don't cast him you engage the blood I'll be teaching you more about the blood next week. But you see, the blood is the system that vetoes every legal operation of Satan because the blood is payment too. Are we together? Satan, when we, some of you who are into the financials, banking and the rest, they call banks systems of settlement. Is that true? If I buy something and I buy whatever it is, when you pay me, you have settled me. It's a system of appeasal. Transactions are simply systems of appeasals. That's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The blood of Abel was crying because there was injustice. It was crying for appeasal. And every time Satan stands to accuse you, before God accuse your family before God if the blood does not speak he is right so what you do in that state is to plead the blood the moment you plead the blood the scene of judgment changes it's no longer you it will be Jesus standing there I want you to understand the revelation behind the blood it does not matter whether some of you here are legal people the moment you bring the blood the accused no longer becomes the accused the accused becomes Jesus only one question will be asked of Satan who sinned that Jesus was crucified it was not him if a sinless man can become guilty then a guilty man can be declared righteous based on that the judge of all the ages will say you are not guilty once and for all are you ready to plead the blood remember what i taught you now that in pleading the blood you no longer become the accused your family no longer becomes the accused jesus stands in your stead the advocate now i want you to plead the blood over your wife your husband listen your children your business your family mention them by name if you can every legal access that is giving satan access over my life by the blood of jesus i declare that voice is silence lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray the advocate stands in your stead the advocate speaks in your stead the advocate he does not fail the judge of all the earth if the sinless one can become the guilty one then the guilty one can be declared not guilty go ahead and let the blood speak even for the sins of the fathers 
even for the sins of territories even for the sins of nations by the blood we call for the advocacy of jesus over the matters of life and destiny over the matters of altars and covenants over the matters of decrees and agreements blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross hallelujah hallelujah please shout this say after me say in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that by the blood of jesus the blood of the eternal covenant every legal access that satan has over my life over my family over my children over my territory by the blood of jesus i declare that access broken now i decree and i declare that i am a partaker of the righteousness of jesus christ therefore i pass a decree as one anointed of god satan take your hands of my life of my job of my destiny of my health i decree it is a new season i decree only the word of the lord comes to pass in my life your strategies of deception over me will not work again i decree that i have spiritual enlightenment i am a child of god you have no power over me the blood speaks against you it speaks for me but it speaks against you in jesus name i pray give jesus a big hand clap and a shout of praise hallelujah we're wrapping up resist the devil and he will flee you don't resist him by just saying go you resist him by bringing forth your strong reasons he said present your cause bring forth your strong reason the strongest reason is the blood are we together let me make the altar call thank you for your patience please let's keep standing to honor those who will be coming I told you that salvation is the greatest form of deliverance because if you are not a bona fide partaker of the life of God then you remain on legal basis a victim of Satan he has right and authorization to afflict you there are people here you are listening to me you are in this auditorium across the balconies outside and following across the globe you are saying apostle give me a chance i need to experience this deliverance fast or there are people who are saying i need renewal of my relationship with jesus following this series i have seen the necessity for jesus if you belong to any of these two categories i'm going to count one to five very quickly for sake of time i want you to boldly leave your seat remember what i taught you about deception don't give in to satan and don't wait for someone to stand before you come as i begin to count i want you to leave your seat you are inside here you are around please give them room so that they can come quickly and come and stand let's celebrate them as they come one i believe someone is coming to jesus young and old come to jesus come to jesus is there anyone coming to jesus god bless you god bless you koinonia celebrate them as they come god bless you god bless you come right to the front here all overflows just move to your led screens and all following from your homes following from everywhere this is your chance to make jesus lord of your life win that war right now do not allow satan to take advantage of you there is a bailout system in christ let's celebrate them as they come 
let's celebrate them as they come hallelujah thank you please if you're coming just rush and come i'm about to lead the people through the prayer session right now i salute every one of you for making this bold and noble decision god bless you please join them quickly thank you for making this decision we're teaching on the deliverance series and believe me god means business with us he means business with you thank you for that bold decision it is only satan who will be losing in this series in the name of jesus christ now may i request that you lift your right hand lift it high above your head Please, if you are joining quickly, just come and stand very quickly, very quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say this after me. Listen, mean it from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that it is within your power to deliver me from the power of of sin satan hell and the grave i declare that i believe in jesus and by my faith in him i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign with christ the power of satan the power of sin, the power of hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring their faith in Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare your sins forgiven. And I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. I declare may you be grounded and established in righteousness. From tonight you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate them. Now I want you to please follow the counselors by my right which is your left. All of you just move in concert and the counselors will have a word or two with you and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So like I announced, next week we'll be wrapping up and I'm going to be teaching you administering deliverance. We'll be dealing with the weapons of victory, the whole armor of God. And then we're going to be touching a few things just to guide you. And then we'll spend time praying and trusting God to establish in reality the victory that is in Christ. As for God, he's more than ready to step into our lives. Like I told you, you will experience marvelous testimonies in your life in Jesus' name. Like we did last week, we're fasting on Thursday. I hope that everybody participated in this fast. Please discipline yourself. Fast on Thursdays. And like I instructed us, between 11 o'clock and 5 o'clock, 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. every day, choose any one hour and pray every day. We are praying all through this series. It's about discipline. It's, about, it's not about convenience. Choose any one hour and pray. If you don't know what to pray for, just play worship and pray in the spirit for one hour. It is for your own spiritual edification. And the Lord will help us in the name of jesus christ now next week here whilst we're wrapping up is going to be a communion service hallelujah we're going to be hallelujah we're going to be engaging the word we're going to serve communion but probably you may want to come with your own uh, bottle or set just for me to bless it and speak over it provided you have understanding i generally hate idolizing all these things because there's no power in idolizing it but with understanding you can you have a communion set or something your wafers and whatever it is i can bless it for you but please come prepared we're going to engage the blood and we're going to engage the word engage the name i'll be teaching you the forces of victory and we'll be trusting god to establish victory once and for all please invite your family members and do well 
to invite those who cannot come here to connect by faith and the Lord will bless them in Jesus name hallelujah I want you to help me appreciate um, while while I was teaching um, they came in his Royal Highness the Olu of worry and the wife may God bless you let's honor them hallelujah thank you so much may the Lord bless you the Lord honor you and increase you and for everyone here may the Lord honor you in Jesus name I pray have you been blessed please um, after we share the grace I want you to do well um, let me plead with you if you can if it's within your power please you can extend the lift for someone so that you help God's people to just minimize the traffic as God grants you grace the security people are there to help you so you don't have to be afraid of um, maybe anyone taking advantage of you the Lord will bless you the Lord will increase you in Jesus name father I pray that you bless your people that you will experience the reality of the victory that comes with Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you